Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Mike, and I do space news on this channel, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, in my last few videos, I was talking about Bigelow Aerospace, which does the inflatable space station. Links below to uh, find out uh, all the information about that. I'm not going to go over all that to, uh, right now in this video, so you can check those other ones out for that. But the reason I was talking about Bigelow Aerospace was to give uh, a little bit of back history on a proposal that has come out from NASA, from a future technology reference design team. Um, and the idea that they've come out with is what they're titling the Nautilus X. Now, the Nautilus X is a combination of different uh, commercial and uh, government programs. and. You just gotta see this thing. I'm so excited about this. So excited about this because this is a real spaceship. This isn't just a small crew capsule. This is a real spaceship. I mean, just look at this thing. Just look at this thing. That's so awesome. You can see the uh, inflatable sta space stations in the back. Those are gonna be the Bigelow space stations. And it's gonna be powered by a Vasimir ion engine, which will be much faster to get it to, to Mars or to the moon or, or anywhere where it's headed. The point is that this is a long duration, deep space spacecraft. And they're proposing that it only be a space only spacecraft which means that it's not going to land on the surface of any planet, including Earth. Here's a little bit different angle here. And uh, earlier I said that it was going to be powered by the Vasimir engine. No, it's going to be powered by those solar panels and possibly even a nuclear reactor. Um, right now that's not on the table, but uh, I'm sure that there'll be onboard batteries and things like that to keep it powered until nuclear technology can be developed and be put in space for reasons like this. And uh, I also said that uh, in, with the Vasimir engine, that's not the only engine that it can use. It can use any type of different engine. The whole purpose being so that you can swap the, the engines out for different kinds of missions, whether it's going to the moon or uh, cislunar space or even further out to Mars. So, you know, you don't really need to strap on the most powerful engine you need, depending on what mission you have. And uh, if you're wondering with that circular ring there in the middle, that is going to be a centrifuge module, which is going to produce artificial gra gravity, which is necessary for any kind of journey out into deep space because of muscle atrophy and uh, bone density loss, uh, osteoporosis, all that all those sort of problems that happen to space travelers when they're in zero-g environments. With that centrifuge module, you'll be able to get at least partial gravity in certain parts of the ship so that your crew can still, you know, be able to keep their muscle mass up and keep their bone mass up so that they don't succumb to all those problems. And because of that, they'll be able to be out in space for longer periods. According to this proposal, up to two years. And right now, the max amount of time that NASA and all the other space agencies allow their astronauts to be in space is six months on the International Space Station. And the way that this centrifuge module is going to work is by producing a spin. And that spin is what's going to create the artificial gravity. And I love about this spaceship on uh, the side there uh, of the front module, you can see that um, the, that port sticking out. That's where all the piloting is going to be done and where the main uh, command module is. I think it's so reminiscent of the Millennium Falcon. And NASA guys do things all the time to uh, remind us of Star Wars and Star Trek. I think it's hilarious. But uh, I think that's pretty cool that they have the command module on that side. And then on the other side here, you can see that module sticking out uh, on this side. And that's going to be an airlock for astronauts to do EVAs, or extravehicular activities, pretty much spacewalking. And then it's also going to be equipped with uh, a, a dish that you can see there to communicate with Earth and uh, space stations anywhere, pretty much. And uh, it's also going to have a robotic Canada arm, which you can see better in this picture, uh, to be able to, you know, install modules and, and help with uh, any EVAs that need to be done, uh, like repairs in flight. Um, there's there's lots of different uses for that, but. Uh, 
something else that's really cool about this whole design is that they want it to be expandable and customizable to suit whatever missions are in store for it. And in this version, you can see that there's two more rows added. And on top of the first row, there's a new inflatable module, which at the top there, that's a, a, a cupola module, which is that window that they installed on the space station last year. And uh, on top of the other two rows are what's going to be hangar bays for lunar landers or Mars landers or asteroid landers any kind of landers. And in the back there it would have the Vasimir engine to get it to Mars faster than the almost two year trip that it would be right now with the uh, conventional rockets we have. But this is a true space cruiser from science fiction fantasy. I mean, it's realistic. This is something that we could actually make with the current technology that we have right now. And I want one so bad. I want to be the commander on one of these things. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that, but it's so cool. I want one of these so bad. Now, uh, the proposal is saying that it's going to cost anywhere from 3 to $4 billion, which I'm sure is a very modest estimate. The whole uh, suggestion in there is that this all be done by commercial and private companies. And it wouldn't just be Bigelow that we'd be involved, although that would be a, a very significant portion of these spaceships. Get, get other companies together to assemble the rest of the spaceship and provide all the other materials and, and components needed. And it just may cost, you know, $4 billion. And if that's how much it could cost, and th this thing could actually be built and be done by these companies who are people who actually care about space and aren't in it for the buck, I mean, let's freaking do it! I'm going to start a donation box right now to start getting one of these things built. Let's do this! We could have real space cruisers out there, and we could finally get out there and go back to the moon and go to these asteroids and to Phobos and Deimos and eventually to Mars and really expand out and become an interplanetary civilization. I know that we're not quite the Type 1 civilization, according to Michio Kaku. We're not quite a planetary civilization, but a spaceship like this could make us a planetary civilization could make all of us unite together in one coordinated effort and even if it's done by the commercial companies they'll have the support of the people because it will fire up their imaginations especially of young people hopefully even my age that and and everybody not just it's not just age groups but everybody will be inspired by this and hopefully everyone will be inspired to cooperate peacefully with each other so that we can go out there and go on to the next step, a type 2 civilization, an interplanetary civilization, and eventually spread out to our entire soul sector, and then move out to the stars and have starships instead of just spaceships. That's my dream, that's why I'm doing this, I want this to happen, and right now this is the proposal that has gotten me the most excited, and I'm looking into what this whole uh, FISO group uh, has been coming up with and they have lots of really cool ideas and I think that these private companies should use uh, NASA as like an overhead oversight type of organization that doesn't actually do any of the physical work or even provide um, a whole lot of funding maybe it'll provide some funding but use their launch uh, pads that they have use their mission control center and any corpse you know all the research centers all that sort of stuff but m mostly just to coordinate the efforts and every Everyone will have their specific uh, component or, or job that they're good at. You know, SpaceX is good at building rockets. Bigelow is good at building the inflatable space stations, etc., etc. The whole point being is NASA come up with the inspirational plans, come up with the next mission and the next challenge, and you know whether it be these asteroids or Mars or whatever. You know, NASA will be the one to come up with those inspirational plans, and all the private companies will be the ones to make them happen with the support of the people. But first the people gotta get behind it. And I think that if people were more aware of it, and if these companies accepted donations, we could get this happening at a much faster timetable. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be preachy, and I don't mean to seem angry. I'm really excited about this, but 
at the same time, I'm just so frustrated with the whole cost plus contracting and the way that things are done and have been done for the past 40 years in space. And I really think that out there in space, I really think that we that is our future, that's our destiny. That is how we're going to survive as a species, by getting out there in, in space and finding other places for us to survive and live. We may even have to build those places. Anyway, I need to end this rant, but I'm just really excited about this and in my next video I'm going to talk about things that are being done right now uh, to make this happen. There are certain technologies that need to be proven and things that need to be done before the very first uh, cruiser can be made. The first one that only had one row of the inflatable space stations. And uh, I'll talk about that in the, my next video about what all those things are. And uh, as always, uh, subscribe, rate my video, comment my video, ask me any questions, give me any corrections, or give me any more information about this due to my lack of technical knowledge. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.